Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The president of Germany, Frank Walter Steinmeier, visited Warsaw today for a meeting with his Polish counterpart, Andrzej Duda. The meeting came on the 30th anniversary of the Bonn Agreement on friendly neighbourly relations between the two countries. The Polish president stated that the two nations have come far in their relations, but there remain some issues that need to be resolved, including the legal status of the Polish minority in Germany. On the 17th of June 1991, the Polish-German Treaty of Good Neighbourship and Friendly Cooperation was signed in Bonn. The signatories to the treaty were, on the Polish side, the Prime Minister Jan Krzysztof Bielecki and the Foreign Minister Krzysztof Skubiszewski, and on the German side Chancellor Helmut Kohl and Foreign Minister Hans-Dietrich Genscher. The treaty was a supplement to the Polish-German Border Treaty of the 14th of November 1990, which was one of the conditions of German reunification. At today's meeting, I underscored that the treaty has been beneficial to both our states, as well as for other European nations, for Poles and for Germans. I also stated that the treaty was born from Polish solidarity. Together with the treaty, Poland and Germany opened a new chapter in the often tumultuous and difficult history between our nations. It was a chapter of hope. The Polish-German neighbourly relations are now one of the great achievements and successes of Europe in the last 30 years. In addition to celebrating the anniversary, the presidents also discussed current matters, including issues that were either not included in the 1991 treaty or have not been implemented. Above all, the status of the Polish minority in Germany. The German minority in Poland is treated well and has been given special rights, while things look radically different from the Polish minority living in Germany. Their special minority rights were abolished by Nazi Germany and have unfortunately never been reinstated, despite our efforts for that to be done. One of the controversial topics in the Polish-German relations is the continued construction of the Russia-German gas pipeline Nord Stream 2, which will bypass Poland, Ukraine and the Baltic states, thus threatening the energy security of the region. Poland has been opposed to it from the beginning. Apart from the topics of the two countries' differences, the presidents also referred to the benefits of having signed the treaty in Bonn. For the first time since the 18th century partitions, the treaty gave the chance not only for the lasting peaceful coexistence of the Polish and German nations, but also for joint action for the benefit of the whole of Europe. Lithuania's Prime Minister Simonite has stated that the government of Belarus is behind the sudden spike in the number of Iraqi migrants illegally entering Lithuania from Belarus. The acts of the Belarusian government are reminiscent of the tactic of weaponized migration previously used by Turkey against Greece and more recently by Morocco against Spain. She believes the Belarus government is behind the recent spike of illegal immigration into Lithuania by helping the migrants trying to get into the European country and claim asylum there. Relations between Belarus and the European Union have been strained since the crackdown that followed the disputed 9th August presidential election in Belarus, leading to several rounds of European Union sanctions against the country. European carriers were told to avoid Belarus airspace and its national airline was banned from flying over the EU after the country forced a Ryanair plane with a dissident on board to land in Minsk on the 23rd of May, further straining the relationship. Lithuania has seen a sharp increase in immigrant numbers since then, and the Prime Minister says she believes the Belarus government is facilitating it. Speaking to reporters at the Border Guard's headquarters near Dubichai, the Prime Minister stated that the increase came after threats from Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. This is not an accident, given that uh, there were some threats uh, from uh, Mr. Lukashenko, who was... Uh, threatening European Union that European Union countries will be fl flooded with uh, drugs and migrants. And here we go, in a couple of weeks, we see a rapid increase of uh, people who are crossing the, the border illegally. Lithuania has detained 198 migrants arriving over the border with Belarus since the 3rd of June, more than doubling the total number of migrants detained since the start of the year. The country received no more than 90 migrants annually in 2017 to 2020, according to the country's border guard, and its infrastructure is strained by the influx. The head of the border guard says that more than 1,500 Iraqis have arrived in Minsk in recent weeks. According to our information, in Minsk now, there is an accumulation of a rather large group of illegal immigrants. It keeps getting filled up by people arriving from Baghdad or Istanbul. But there is quite a group of illegal immigrants that can move towards the border at any time. And if we look at the situation last week, or the one before last, we see that nearly every night or day we saw illegal immigration violation cases. A few dozen large heated tents have been erected at Lithuania's migrant processing centre to create space for 350 additional people, tripling the centre's capacity. 
The German police has reported that more than 60 German police officers were injured in riots over a building being occupied by squatters in Berlin on Wednesday. The battle, which lasted for hours, is the worst case of unrest in the city for many years. A Berlin court has granted officials permission to carry out a fire inspection in the building, but when police attempted to secure the area at Reugeerstrasse 94, the situation escalated. According to Berlin police, officers were attacked with stones from the street and from the roof of the building by around 200 people. Supporters of the residents erected barricades and set them on fire, claiming on Twitter that the street will be barricaded and an autonomous zone set up to prevent the Senate's red zone. The far-left militant groups made operations in the area more difficult by setting up a number of burning barricades on the streets. Thomas Kirstein from the Berlin Fire Service explained that the fire brigades had to wait for the police to grant them safety. Yes, we were elated around 10.45 a.m. this morning about a fire and a burning barricade on the street. When we arrived, the police were already there and had cl classified the area as not safe. And that is the sign for the fire brigade that we must wait for the police to grant us safety. Well, we are very vigilant and in close coordination with the Berlin police. There are concepts for this. It worked very well here today that the fire department did not enter an unsafe area where they may have been at risk. That is our task in the next few days, that we remain very vigilant. Around 200 police were brought in for the operation, using water cannons to clear the barricades and protests. We already had emergency services in this area to prepare the general decree, which will apply from tomorrow to enable the fire protection officer to inspect it. My officers were attacked sometimes targeted on the ground or with stones thrown from roofs. But the protesters also acted on the street. There are injured emergency services workers that we have to complain about. We currently have around 200 police officers here in the area. Police said that they would also have around 200 officers in place on Thursday to allow the fire service to try to carry out the inspection again. Slovakia's Supreme Court has ordered a retrial of a businessman acquitted over the 2018 murder of investigative journalist Jan Kuciak and his fiancée following an appeal from prosecutors. Citing a lack of evidence, a lower court last year acquitted Mariad Kotzner in a case that shook Slovakia and led to mass protests against corruption in government. The investigative journalist Jan Kuciak and his fiancée Martina Kusnirova were gunned down in their home outside Bratislava in February 2018. Prosecutors alleged that the businessman, Marian Kotzner, the subject of Kuchak's articles on corruption involving politically connected entrepreneurs, had ordered the killing because of Kuchak's reporting. Judge Peter Paluda said the Supreme Criminal Court did not consider all available evidence and must retry the case. Asked about her feelings after the court's decision, the mother of the murdered fiancé told reporters that they have to be able to work without being afraid. Really mixed, but I am glad that justice has won. This is the first shout into the darkness for justice in Slovakia, not only for our two children, but for the next generations and for you journalists, so you are not scared to write and reveal. The court also confirmed the sentencing of Thomas Shabo, accused of taking part in the Kutsiak killing, as well as another murder, to 25 years. Asked whether he has faith in the court, Kutsiak's father said that he had no other choice. What else do I have left? I do believe the special criminal court's judges. I don't think I'd be able to deal with it if it was to start all over again under a different judge. So I'm pleased about the decision. The murders sparked massive protests, forced long-term leader Robert Fico to step down as prime minister and ushered in a new government last year, whose main election promise was to clean up corruption and sleaze. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.